Welcome everyone to another episode of Kiwi Talks. I have in the building once again the flying Fijian. Woo! MMA Here sensation. He Here he is. Carlos X. What's up? What's up? Back what? to impart me with his wisdom. Here's a go. <laughs> so 2020 wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard out. Well, a lot's changed since the last time I had you on, bro. Yeah, bro. A lot is an understatement, bro. Yeah. Feels like the world's turning to shit, eh? Hard, hard. <clears throat> how did you how did you cope with uh the whole COVID nineteen lockdown thing when it first became apparent? Well, first of all, COVID nineteen. Were you were you initially worried about it when it first you know, when it first started coming out of Wuhan? Did yeah, for sure. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't too worried because I think New Zealand where we, we were situated, eh, it's it's pretty it's pretty we're pretty isolated but yep. then i think i didn't start worrying about it until it actually hit new zealand yeah you know? i think i was the same i think i was getting a bit worried around about february i was thinking oh okay this is this is quite serious mm. but then in march it it was insane like just like that we were in lockdown yeah yeah <laughs> no because like obviously i had a new baby and like my other two kids they um the immune system isn't as strong as like mine and my wife, so that's what kind of worried me most. So I, I kind of put a ban on everybody coming to the house and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair I, was, I was like, nah, <laughs> no thanks, Not Shane, it, man. stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, I was worried at the start, and then um, I'm, I don't know. There's so much shit going on, bro. It's like it's definitely a scary thought. Knowing that, like, that every like our world's different now. With everything's changed, yeah, just from this virus, you know. And then a lot I've I've been hearing a lot of people say like, this is kind of a test run because like Hard. there could be something worse coming, like another virus, another immune, you know, something coming. So that's that's a scary thought, you know. Yeah, well, they we're quite lucky in the sense that this pandemic is only attacking for the most part you know just elderly people yeah. or people with weaker immune systems mm, mm. yeah if it, because i know with the spanish flu uh the reason why that was so deadly is uh it attacked like healthy immune systems yeah a lot of people within the 20 yeah. to 30 range i think it's called a cytokine storm i think it is where it causes the immune system to attack itself mm. Mm. Yeah, so people who had healthy immune systems were were like being attacked by it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, you know, no so one you know was safe. Eh? Yeah, yeah. But that but that was actually the second wave because there were two waves, and the first wave wasn't initially that that bad, but it was the second wave that that caused the most. Most yeah, they're saying there's there's a second wave coming now. Eh? Yeah, there yeah. was like new cases in Beijing yeah. apparently. Yeah, I don't know if they have they locked that place down. Yeah, uh, I think they have, yeah. But I, I was reading, I think, yesterday that they found traces of the coronavirus within the the food markets there. So, Why didn't they shut their shiz down? Well, like? I think they did, but I don't know. Somehow it's managed to still get out. It just shows how, you know, stubborn this virus is, man. Yeah, it's like, yeah for sure. Nah, man, you ain't getting rid of me. Well, apparently in, in America... They've got two different strains, like the one that in New York, um, and this is just from listening to other podcasts. Um, they they said that the the strain from New York came from Europe. Yeah, that one, and then the one in like LA and where in other places and around America, that was, I don't know that that was the strain they came from China or something like that. Like that's why New York was hit way really worse. Hard. Like that's like that's like the hub now for the world. New Yorkers, like, yeah, just yeah. got so many people, like so many lives in the crap right now. Eh? Well, because you because got of... like such high population density, and everyone's on top of each other. Eh? That's like I don't like that. Eh? Nah, nah, I don't like. I hope we don't turn to that here. Like with all the high rises going up in Auckland now, and all the apartments, we we were leading there. I mean, we're running out of space, really. Like, yeah, not, yeah. As as a whole, like the world is running out of space. We, we, there's so much people, so many people now, and everyone's just like. Pfft. And I think in the case of Auckland, is a majority of the jobs are up there. You know, mm. everyone wants to yeah. be there. The problem with say Wellington, you know, even though it's our second largest city, it's surrounded by 
mountainous terrain. So Wellington's it, beautiful. It, I love Wellington. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I love Wellington. Yeah. I think it's way better in uh, way better CBD than Auckland's for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's just got a really good vibe. But because it's on a massive fault line. You can't really build too high, yeah, yeah. and it's surrounded by mountainous terrain, so you can't even build houses. Nah. Have you traveled, you know, around some of the hills and stuff? No, not on the hills. I've been to Wellington a few times, and uh, I've seen the hills. I've seen houses on those hills as well. Yeah, but the the messed up part is a lot of those uh, hills on the houses, right? They don't have driveways, so everyone parks their car on the side of the road. But the problem is because you've got a lot of sharp turns, you can be just driving, turning around the corner. And then there's a car like just parked there, and you're like, "Oh crap!" And so you go, "Yeah." And they've got really narrow streets as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know who designed those streets, man, but they were off. Well, I, th- I don't think they, they didn't use the right yeah, way of I... measuring it or something. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think they would have um, like p- planned to have this many people, though. You know, those settlers when they first came there. Oh, for sure, man. Mm. I was in um, Tauranga just a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And I'm amazed how bad the traffic is there for a population of 120,000 people. I'm like, yo, man, when this gets to 200,000, you're going to have traffic worse than Auckland. It's over. It's over. Tauranga is a little um, little bit of a touristy thing, too. There's yeah. a lot of people that come out of town, though, eh, and yeah. travel there. So. It's like one big retirement village. A lot of Aucklanders <laughs> move there, too. It is, eh? <laughs> it is. I'd love to go to Tauranga as well and yeah. just live there. Like, there was, I'd, I'd love to go there. Tauranga is going to be popping apparently in the future yeah yeah just because of the beach and oh the mount really yeah yeah not really tauranga imagine walking up those hills in wellington that do you think they, they everyone's fit there walking up those well i was looking at people's calves when i was there didn't didn't see any big ones <laughs> <laughs> do you check out calves <laughs> i got a weird thing where i just probably because my calves aren't big so yeah. when i see someone it it doesn't even matter if it's a dude or a chick, yeah. man. I'm just like, oh, yo, those we, are mean cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of have this inside joke at the gym, eh? Like, um, we're always like mocking each other's calves because like everything else is nice, but your calves, you can't really do much with your calves. Nah, nah. And depending on your genetic build, you yeah. know, your genetic makeup, it's a very stubborn area. So yeah. it's very hard. Like when when you see like those Arnold Schwarzenegger type calves, I'm like, Damn, mm, genetics, say eh? yeah, genetics, genetics. Eh? Like, like my bro Jordan, he like, he was just gifted with huge calves at fifteen. Like he had bigger calves than all of us, you know. <laughs> and we were like, damn, this guy. <laughs> they were like, um, Ethan's in Bali at the moment, and um, oh, I, is he? He's not trapped there, is he? He is. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, there's no flights coming in, so um. Yeah, so he's just waiting for a flight back. So what are you doing in terms of like training and everything? Just training at home, pretty much, in level one. Is I'll the gym be, open at all? I'll be no? back in. Yeah, yeah, the gym's open now. Okay. I'll be going back to Auckland starting Monday. Oh, to train with um, yeah, in, Eugene in, in Auckland. City kick, yeah, yeah. Kickboxing. Yeah. We've just been waiting for this level one and waiting for, waiting for everything to settle down and shiz, you know? Yeah. And now these two new cases. Oh, man. Bruh, it's, is it two now? Three. So no, there's three because there was one confirmed, uh, but by the time this airs, there could be more. Who knows? But the, the 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 it exposed really the the flaws within the system, mate. I don't even know how it happened. Why? It, it was massive it, clusterfuck, bro. How that's what a waste of a lockdown, really. I, that's why people are pissed off. Yeah, they're not. Well, they're pissed off because of the two ladies mm. that were just being idiots. Yeah, but it's 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 not their fault. It started at the top. Like whoever let yeah, them out yeah. and then let them back in. Like the whole that whole thing is a shit show, eh? Like it is. They have a bit to blame for it, but it wasn't like they got let out and then they got let to go home. Yeah, they yeah. got sent home. So you know? it's uh, it's really really bad. If, I mean, what do you think they'll do? If what do you think New Zealand will do? If the government goes, I right, we gotta go back go into, into lockdown. lockdown. <laughs> to be honest, I think some people will start rebelling. I think they'll be like, I think, How would this? I shit? think a lot of people will bro. Like there's people struggling now, like from this lockdown. Yeah, yeah. I, I know so many people who's been let go from their jobs because they're all casual workers, right? And yeah. then no one's got money. You know, so if they go level four again, bro, I, I, I'm I'm a little bit worried, especially. Well, it really depends. Like the other way of doing it would be if they did it via different regions. Like say, because you know how all these cases are in Auckland. Yeah. If they just contained Auckland. 
and the rest of the country just does its thing. Yeah, but look, look at the population of Auckland. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> if they but, start rebelling, <laughs> the rest of New Zealand might jump on board, you know? But you know what Aucklanders are like. Aucklanders stick to Auckland, man, anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah. I'm from Auckland. Yeah, yeah. And even when I was up there, I didn't really leave the... the I nah. didn't really go south of the Bombay. Uh, unless much. you have to, eh? Yeah, because, you know, there's, there's Auckland is superior, superiority compli- yeah. complex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I miss Auckland. I miss, I miss oh, so do I, bro. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. But I feel like Hamilton's nice, nice and quiet. Hamilton's like a little brother of Auckland, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you see the bypass is done, though? So when yeah. you drive to Auckland, because yeah. Yeah. I think I got from here to Manukau in like an hour yeah yeah same same I just I was up there on um, Monday and that that took me an hour like, that's good a little less than an hour because I know because I can imagine when you drive up there to uh, go to city kickboxing mm. the drive can mentally be draining it's two hours bro in the car yeah like, that I don't know I you see, you, Do you, you have a Red Bull or a V just sitting in your car as you're um, driving up there? I have these things. They're called Fistics. Like, um, they're like um, vitamin They're like vitamin sachets and it's got caffeine in it. My like my wife's selling these products. These um, They're called Fistics and like I have that in like replace of coffee. And it's oh, really nice. nice. It's like a... They're better for you as well. Yeah, right? yeah, real, yeah, real good for you. And it's like... It's like kind of like sustained energy it doesn't like you know how coffee goes up and then you get that drop like later on in the day whereas this it kind of goes up and then you just stay there for yep. a while okay mm, so it's like i have that in the morning and and that keeps you yeah refreshed. And, then, and then i have one on the drive back oh right okay. yeah because i i'm still tired just like depending on what time i finished work you do know? you go at the speed limit or are you 120, 130. <laughs> I, go, I go speed limit, bro. Uh, uh, good man, good man. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't. No, nah, nah. <laughs> I've seen a couple of times the cops on the side. I'm like, oh. yeah. But I've usually sussed out where they are. Yeah, yeah. I need to get a police radar, I think. You eh? do, you uh, got, yeah. I've sussed out where they are too. I think, yeah, I think Izzy's got one. I don't know. It's funny that you can buy it, but you can't use it. It's illegal to use. Uh, uh, Is it? Yeah. Yeah, apparently, like, because uh, a lot of truckers have it. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I think a lot of people have it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people have it. So yeah, yeah. it's like, it's, a, it's illegal to buy, but I don't think you can, like, if you, it, if it gets, if the cop pulls you over and he sees it in the car, I think you can get, like, a big fine. Like, how much, are we talking thousands? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I would say that it'll be a huge fine, like, way yeah. more than whatever speed limit you were doing. It's a good segue, actually. So, you know, with the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Yeah. Um, with with regards, I mean, have you ever been pulled over by a cop? Have you had yeah, runners, yeah, runners with police? Yeah. Have yeah. you personally had any problems with them or not? Nah? Yeah. Growing up in South Auckland, bro, that, that, was, oh, yeah, that was the norm. Like, you kind of, um, there's almost like a, um, not a fear, like we don't fear for our lives like in America and stuff like that, but it's always just like, even if you're not doing anything wrong, there's this oh shit what yeah. have I done you know what I mean like <laughs> they make you feel that yeah, you've done yeah. so there's else. some type of intimidation like what are you doing like what are you doing hey how you been well, what are you, you know what I mean yeah. and it's just real uh, like so that I I understand that to, to to a degree because like you know it's it's not in Auckland especially and being like an islander like you walk into like you, you get all these little like New Zealand we're not really well I don't know we there's racist aspects like there's racist people for sure in oh, every yeah. society right but like in South Auckland I did feel and a lot of people that um in my area too we felt like um yeah there were moments where cops would just instigate shit you know what I mean like purposely try and rock you up mm. you know what i mean and then so um so yeah there, there were moments and like i would get put i have i have got pulled up maybe three times for no reason 
They just randomly pulled just you over. Ran, just randomly pull you up. And when like, they and when they were pulling you over, were you like, shit, what have I done? Yeah. What did yeah. I do? Was I speeding? Nah, yeah, for sure. I was just like I was like, oh, and then it's just like, oh, we're just um checking your license and like seeing if your shit's all sweet, you know? Like the cars that I used to drive though, we, like you could, I, I understood them pulling me up, but it was it was just like so what was I speeding? Did I had not have my license? Did I not indicate like it's mm. shit it's shit like that that kinda gets a little bit annoying because like I'll give a good example, right? I was uh, like like not not just cops but um going to I just told a story on Wednesday, like me and my mate D we would go into a shop, right? And um, this is separate from police, but we'll, we'll go into the shop and like, he's white, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm brown. So I'll go in, we both go in, and then I'm the one that gets the, like, you know what I mean? Oh, like, I are see. you, like, are you all right? Da, 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 like, and then so I'll get followed and the bro won't, you know what I mean? But he's worse than I am. Like, <laughs> he's the bad example, you know? So I'm just like, bro, go see the bro. I'm like, sweet, you know yeah. what I mean? But, but yeah, it's just those little things, bro, that's, um, that we can sort of compare ourselves to the whole movement, eh? Mm. But um, what is happening is crazy. There's a lot of people taking advantage of the situation as well. Oh, there is. Which and I feel like is, yeah. is what's put, put, like, putting the sort of light off the actual you know what i mean the narrative's changing yeah yeah mm. what the actual i mean george floyd doesn't even really get mentioned anymore nah you know and nah. you've got all these rioters and looters and stuff mm. and yeah i mean that was my worry mm. like even with the protests and stuff i knew about five people that were going to try and get a selfie with izzy I'm like, oh, what are you doing, man? That's yeah. not the purpose of it. <clears throat> nah. Um, just and that's, not, and that's not to say that everyone's doing that, mm. but yeah, I mean, it's it's sad. It's sad. What but I you? also, but I also think that I think sometimes, and I don't think it's just New Zealand. I think we, the whole world, is kind of get guilty of this because one of the biggest things that America exports is mm. its culture. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of us absorb it, mm. and we try and translate it like the exact same campus, like a black and white campus to mm. New Zealand. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly the same. And it's, it's, it's not, not, it's not, it's definitely it doesn't not. doesn't apply. Like, there are, there are definitely some, I had a, I had a chat to a few of my cop mates mm. um, and I asked them, I'm like, oh, do you feel there's racial prejudice within the police? And they're like, yep, definitely. Yeah, there for definitely sure. Is. But for sure. it's not as extreme as say in the States. Nah. And nah. you got to think the mentality is different, right? Because in America, everyone has a gun. So yeah. if you're a cop, yeah, like if I was a cop, I'd be always on guard. Yeah, man. Like, anxiety, but, hey, PTSD, you know, shit. Yeah, that's yeah, real, just bro. Like shit, because you know you pull someone over in the car and they're gonna yeah. shoot you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. Like, I feel like those cops need more training how to deal with those situations because it's, it's so easy to be a cop, bro. And then you, and then you get thrown into these pressure cookers. You know what I mean? Where mm. you're always on edge. And like, there's there's a stat. I don't know. I don't know the exact stat, but like, um. Most cop killings happen at like routine traffic stops. So that adds to the whole, oh shit, you know what I mean? So that if there was better training and better education on like how to deal with certain, like certain situations, instead of meeting it like head on, Mm. try and kind of de escalate it and like understand like these bad people. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't, you, you can't, yeah. you can't sort of control that. But I feel like if your first instinct is to grab your gun, like that's not good. You know what I mean? Like the, I, I, man, I went down this rabbit hole last week. Um, not last week, last two nights ago, and brah, I was so sad afterwards. I was just like, <laughs> frick, bro. I was on um Joe Schilling. He's a do you know Joe? Schilling? He's a kickboxer. Oh yes, yes. Um, fights for Bellator now, and like he's been sharing all these police brutality videos. Yeah, and like he there was this one that was about f- four minutes long, and it had like twenty or thirty clips on it, and then it was just sad, man, just seeing like these. And it's not, it's not all cops, bro. It's just this small minority, minority, bro. That just makes every, this turns everything to shit, you know. And these guys are just 
power tripping and you hear them on like when they're talking to somebody that's not even like being aggressive or anything they're just like shut up shut up i'm talking shut up you don't ask christian listen listen yeah. to me shut up you know and it's just like bro you don't have to be like that like it's a power trip it's definitely a powerful trip for some people and a lot of these dudes it's like that stems from somewhere else you know well where does it come from i don't know maybe they were bullied in school or maybe life's just not going anywhere and, and they're humans at the end of the day you know so yeah. like who knows they could have been having a fight with their wife that day so you never really know but some of these dudes they just like it's almost like they go out to find drama you know to go out hoping somebody will test them so they can do something because they know they can get away with it yeah yeah you know so there's no there's no um there's almost no consequences really like this this guy this george um what's his name george floyd no nah, not i know george but the officer oh i don't well, know this guy yeah if, well that guy if, i don't know his name yeah but if, we're, we're not giving him any publicity nah yeah. if he doesn't get like if he doesn't get charged for like murder and gets thrown away bro i reckon everything's gonna turn to shit it almost seems america's on the verge of another civil war yeah Over they've been it. talking about this for a while i remember like a couple of months ago like just before the corona i heard somewhere that i'm like there's talk of civil war but there was nothing but this was because of donald trump you know Not i think it's a big it, it, he's just a uh you know a catalyst a, he's a byproduct of the system if you think of trump he just he kind of represents a lot of what america think right now that probably yeah. it's a lot of i mean because there's been a lot of racism in america mm. and a lot of it i think it's just been under the surface yeah and i think this is just brought, brought it, it back up yeah. Eh? yeah yeah it's um i mean it's like obviously there's the i i mean i feel with the black lives matter here i mean i'm taking a hiatus from facebook and stuff at the moment because i was just i was getting over it man just yeah. scrolling through my news, news feed yeah and just racism and bigotry on yeah. both sides yeah like yeah, I, for sure. I the last thing i want to see is it dividing new zealand nah no nah. like um okay so you know about the statue that got removed in hamilton yeah. yeah 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 so for those who don't know um basically captain hamilton who led a platoon i think i, I don't even remember the year um but anyway his statue has been removed and um people are arguing over it you know oh, maybe we should change the name of hamilton to its original name yeah which is kitty kitty da mm. Um, but there's a huge argument over that. So anyway, there's there's a Hamilton Facebook notice board. Right? Yeah. So I posted on there. I said, oh, hey, um, they're thinking of changing the name. What are your thoughts? I personally uh, don't think it's a good idea mm. um, because I, it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. And I feel that money could be put. Yeah. It's a waste something of money. Else. Like, like just changing a name. Yeah. It, bro, I got crucified by people man i got accused of being a racist you know and all this other, all this bigotry it's very easy like, like thing hell, to jump man? on eh? i know i was just like yo man i'm just asking a question so i can get another perspective yeah yeah that's all i was trying to do yeah. but then i just got like crucified for it and mm. i was just like oh, i'm over this shit man it's mm. it's you have to have you have to be aligned with the majority. Yeah. You can't question anything. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, not the majority, just the loudest people. Well, yeah, I, mean? I shouldn't say the majority, but the the loudest minority. Yeah, that's what I should yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I've seen it, but I don't really. It doesn't really bother me that much, you know. Like, um, only because I, I don't know much about it. I know of the Ham Hamilton good. guy yeah yeah so I mean because it's not part of my history you know what I mean yeah yeah so, so if let's say this guy led a platoon against a whole bunch of Fijians or something yeah then you'd probably be a lot more emotionally invested yeah in yeah for yeah. sure yeah. he probably would have been eaten as well so but <laughs> I would have been fine with that <laughs> so like uh, yeah so it doesn't it doesn't affect me directly like it affects a lot of my people too like my my people from New Zealand you know and mm. there's a lot of people who are like um but there's also a lot of people just yelling just to yell like yeah yeah change it to kid kid or uh, i'm i don't know I, I don't really have a problem with the name hamilton the guy hamilton he was a prick right but 
the name Hamilton, it's like we're kind of going backwards now if we change it to Kirikiriro. And to be honest, before this, I don't think anyone... I mean, you never saw any news articles. Everybody and, knew, like... Nobody nobody really cared before, no. but then all of a sudden, you know, it's just... I don't know. I, I don't like the byproduct of the Black Lives Matter in mm. terms of it. It's just causing, like, woke culture to just go extreme with things, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. What does it give, give an inch and take a mile or something? Yeah, Whatever yeah, that saying yeah. Is. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, this definitely has been bubbling for a while. Black Lives Matter... Um, it, the core of it is pure and good, but there's there's also there's also a, a kind of dark side to it where people are, um, like I said, they're changing the narrative. They're making it out like they're moving away from the actual. Yeah, mm, they're moving mm. away from the actual topic. You know what I mean? Then it's like they're trying to take 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 and assist. There's no middle ground almost. Nah. Well, it's like a sense of tribalism. Mm, mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's the same with, if you think about politics, it's the same as well. It's our side versus your side. Yeah, no matter what. You like, know, like there's hardcore national supporters, hardcore labor supporters, and no matter what the other side says, it like, nah. Yeah, even if you say something. That's, yeah, that, like, I don't, I hate political talk and shit like that. Like, but <laughs> they, I, there was, um, like, with the American elections coming up, like I see so many people saying like anybody but Trump, you know, <laughs> and it's a, that doesn't make sense. Like the, you're you're choosing somebody that's gonna run your country. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like anybody but Trump. That's that's. There could be people who are worse than Trump. And, exactly. And I know Trump's really bad. Yeah, but. bro. And then it's just like anybody but Trump. So uh, you know, Trump's not the greatest. Like leader for that place, you know what I mean? Oh, that's pretty good, lightly, bro. But you can't, you can't say anybody but Trump. Like yeah. you gotta vet these dudes. These guys are gonna be like in probably the most powerful p- position in the world. Anybody but Trump? Yeah. Can, can I be? Yeah, can yeah. I be the president? Yeah, you know hook what me I mean? up. I'll like, do it. You know, yeah. Like they gotta, they gotta just do because they're in the situation now because like Trump won the popularity contest. Yeah, you know well, that's I mean? that's what it is. It's just yeah. a popularity contest. I know. And, uh, apparently, The Rock wants to run. <sighs> <laughs> I don't if you smell. No. Imagine if he comes out of here yeah, and he yeah. first, his first address, you're just like, if you smell. No. Oh. Could you imagine him in debates? You know, jabroni. Yeah. Do you want to talk? Got, got the rock eye <laughs> up, hey, what'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> Do the eyebrow. It doesn't matter <laughs> what you think. Yeah. yeah would... Well, the rock says yeah. this. <laughs> people jabroni. Will, people will love him, though. People oh, yeah. Love him. I'm going to lay the smack down uh, during this debate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll give you the people's elbow. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to turn this mic sideways <laughs> and stick it straight up. Your candy ears. <laughs> ah, jabroni. <laughs> yeah, bro. Nah, I, I would. To be honest, it's bro, just, I'd love to. I, I would love to see it. Me but, too. But, the, but, the entertainment factor, like that's why I loved when Trump got into office at at the start. You know, oh, he was, was amazing just, to watch. I was just like, bro, this is so entertaining. <laughs> like, go go hit America, yeah, do yeah. your thing, yeah, bro. Yeah. This is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. Everyone's everyone's so like. You know, everyone's t- with the clickbaity title. You just see that. Oh, you just want to be entertained. You yeah. know, they're just a. Uh, everybody wants to be entertained now, and then now, suddenly they got a reality TV show. Well, that's what he is. Person, like, you know, as because their president. Big, I mean, I know uh, in Hollywood, it's actually the same in India with Bollywood as well. But they almost worship celebrities there. Yeah, you know, they worship fame. We're yeah. not really the same here. Nah. I feel good. like that at the it's, it's that tall puppy shit like we're like ah, it's like oh ah, what yeah yeah uh, okay you're cool you know what I mean like I did we, read that I did hear in an interview that Izzy like people kept coming to Izzy's door asking for autographs and stuff so there probably is still a little bit of it but I don't think it's the extreme where you'll have mm, like massive well, well I think now New Zealand's changing a little bit because of social media everyone wants that selfie everyone yeah. wants that yeah that cloudy look who I'm with right now you know so that social media is moving New Zealand into that fanboy fangirl sort of domain where I don't it's like just it, like ah eh? Mm, no. I, I like it to an extent, bro. It's just like you know these guys. Um, 
you know, they deserve to get a little bit of shine, you know, with mm. Allah for a long time, no one got shine in New Zealand, like, in, like, no, no, no athlete, like, even our celebrities, bro, like, the guys on Shortland Street, all the movie stars, <laughs> nobody cares about it. If I see, if I see him on the street, bro, I'm just like, oh, there's the dude from Shortland Street, oh, yeah, yeah. you know what I oh, mean? Yeah, yeah. And these dudes are probably the most famous in New Zealand, because, like, 80% of New Zealand watches Shortland Street, so... But, Do you watch it on the street? No, no. I used to because well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my same. mom, my mom used to watch it all the time. So that you know, when when the show's on, nobody talks. You know, everyone's <laughs> just like <laughs> they used to go to my gym, eh, back at West Auckland because I used to go to the Trust Stadium gym. Oh yeah, and where they shoot it. Is it's, it still going on? What Sean Street? Yeah, I don't know during COVID. Or, I mean, I haven't watched it. I think it was a serial killer last time I watched it. But oi, I would um. I was very good at drama when yeah. I was um, in high school, yeah. and my my casting um, the my teacher yeah. she knew the casting agent for Short and Street, and tried to get me an audition. I didn't go. Though. What <laughs> you should have gone, bro. <laughs> yeah. I often wonder that, uh, like, I'm like, oh, what would have happened if I'd gone? Would I have been a celebrity? I'm like, mm, I don't know. An Who NZ knows? celebrity. Uh, well, I, I mean, to actually, be honest, you could have gone even further than that because look, was um. Cliff on Shortland Street? Cliff Curtis. Yeah. I don't think he was, but oh, obviously no. Tamara Morrison was. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's a couple of other people. I think um, Martin Henderson was another one. Uh, there's a few other people, I think, that made it from there. But I don't know. I know if people get the wrong idea. They think because I do this podcast that I covet for fame. But fame, eh. I think I'd get annoyed if people were walking up to me all the time being like, hey, hey, hey. I know you get a little bit of that. I'm starting to get a little yeah, bit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go yeah. to events and people be like, oh, you're the Kiwi Talks guy. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's okay. But, yeah, it's cool. It's, but, you'll get to a stage, bro, where you'll get all these, like, you'll get um, celebrities asking, hey, let me on your show. Like, you know what I mean? You'll get people reaching out to you. Oh, uh, well, I, I'm starting to get... Well, I don't have celebrities yet, but there's a lot of people trying to get on this show. Yeah, yeah. So that, and that's it because you're you're like you, you're giving them a voice, and a lot of them just want that clout too. Like, but it, like you're this fame. You're you're like the middle ground. You're like the voice, right? You're like the yeah. You're you're the middle. What I want to say, you you sort of show it out to the world. So somewhat. That's got that's got to be like. That holds a lot, especially in this social media age. Oh yeah, podcasting is the is the money. Like, yeah, we've been reaching out to adverts and advertising and sponsors and shows. Like, I that. was I, I was going to do it before COVID nineteen, but it just feels in bad taste. That just right now turned everything to shitty. Like, oh, oh, dude, I had all these guests lined up, and then COVID hit, and then oh, you know. Mm. So um, it I uh as I mentioned before the show, like I'm kind of having to adapt and just to the model, you know? Yeah. Because if you think of any business, I'll use Kodak as an example, right? They refused to adapt when, you know, the whole landscape of photography and videography was changing. Mm. And they just tried to stick to their roots, you know, stubborn in this is our product and it's always going to be this way. Mm. But the problem is when you do that, the, the, the natural evolution you know, particularly when it comes to technology. You get left behind. You eh? just get left behind and then bye-bye, you're gone, you know? Yeah, yeah, nah. Codex, Codex really, they were the, the uh, eh, they were the sort of camera digital sort of shiz, eh, until mm, mm. all this. Now everybody's got, like, Kodak on their phone. Yeah. Mm. Like, even with you, right? Obviously, with COVID-19 and stuff, you had to adapt and you started training from home. Yeah, I said I, it sort of gave me um, time and, like, I drive to create my gym at home. So I've got a, like, a pretty cool setup now, which, yeah. which I probably didn't have time for before. I had it in the garage, and then <clears throat> then I just moved it out the back. Do you train Do you train with anyone else, though, or do you just train by yourself? Um, I train at core. I do my um, jiu-jitsu, and I train with Joe. Nice. Joe Hamlin. So we, we have our little um, sessions when I'm like not not busy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I have – I get some good trainings in. You yep. know, and Joe's Joe's the man, so we we sort of just vibe off each other, yeah. and then and then I train at home. Sometimes if somebody wants to come over and they we we train together, you know. How, how long do you train for? Probably an hour and a half. Is it is it a combination session. of both kind of like is it weights cardio? No, nah, is it no, both or no, is it more no high intensity? Yeah, it's just high high intensity stuff, and yep. then like if the body's like sore. The next day we'll just do some some drills, drilling. Mm. Or so I, I try to do jujitsu every day, but um, 
most days it's 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 hard so i just train train at home just because of my um work hours and sleep and yeah, yeah. baby and stuff like that and it's just like struggle, struggle I've, street. I've started uh doing the hakuramata trail once a week oh, yeah. to try, try and get my fitness up yeah and i was actually doing it last time i was doing it i did it last week and i was doing it and i was thinking man I should see if Carlos is keen to do this. I wonder how far behind he'd leave me by the time. <laughs> oh, I'm keen, bro. I'll... Can you can you run up it? I get about a quarter of the way and I'm like, nah, my, I'm done. My record is 30, 31, 32 minutes from the car park to the top, back to the car park. Oh, dude, so you're like those... No, 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 so no. So I, I'm not dude. saying I can do that all the time, bro. <laughs> that was just this one time where I, where I was just like... Was that like when you were at your peak of your fitness or something? Or um, were you just having a really good day? No, I was pretty fit. Like, I had a fight coming up. Oh, right. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't peaking at okay. the time. I, just, I actually went for a sauna session before that because I'm stupid. And then, like, and then... Then I was just like, I wonder how I'll do on this on the hucks yeah. while my body's still trying to um, rehydrate itself. Yeah. So I dehydrated myself to a certain extent, like three 10 minute sessions. And then like I was drinking water towards the hucks and then I just went, I sweet, shut the brain off and run. Yeah. So then I just started running. I should probably, probably explain to people because it's probably people who don't live in the Waikato that know what the Hakuramata Trail. Basically it's just what, like an hour long staircase of what 1400 steps or something well, i don't know but it's hard, it's it, hard. it goes so, it goes yeah it goes I, on forever I've never, oh, it feels like i've it. never had an easy hakarimata nah. session even if even walking it bro is hard like once you get to those steps and it's like step 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 and you're like oh, and you look up and then there's still it just keeps more, going yeah there's more steps i just like oh all right i haven't done it in a while i might i might i might do it when you go next I try to do it once a week. I was thinking of maybe going this weekend, um, depending on weather and stuff. But, uh, but I get, I get, I know the first time I did it, I saw this this fifty year old, fifty five year old lady or something like left me, bro. Yeah. And yeah. then there's dudes running down with massive sandbags yeah, and stuff. And yeah. I'm like, what man? This, I, re- this I remember is- this one time I went. This guy, he was trying to do it eight times. And eight he was, times. And he was an older guy, bro. Uh, older fella, oldy moldy fella. And I was just like. So I st- I was just walking it up. I was just walking up, and then he was coming down, and then he like ran past me again, like oh, because I was just walking and because I, I forget who I was with, but then we we stopped a few times, and then he goes and then like kind of when he came past, he was walking next to us, and I go, oh bro, how many times have you done it? And he's just like five, and I was just like, how many times are you doing? And he's like, I'm gonna try eight, and I was just like. Why? <laughs> Why, Why <man>? bro? <laughs> Can you? And he's just like, oh. I wonder if there's a Guinness World Record or something for it, eh? For the Hucks. Yeah, like how many times someone's done it. I don't know. If there was, I reckon there'll be way more people trying to break it because it's just right there for us. And yeah, there's yeah. a lot of fit people in Hamilton that will try and do it. Yeah, because a lot of people do hiking and outdoorsy yeah, stuff. Yeah, you we're know? very outdoorsy. So. A lot of farmers. Yeah, a lot know? of farmers. <laughs> farmers. <laughs> Respect to the farmers, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, is, it is It is. starting to get a bit busy, though. But there's a lot of people that run past me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to... I, I, I really want to go up, actually. Mm, I'm probably a long way from doing 30, yeah. 32 minutes, bro. Like... I think I'm lockdown got me a little bit, little bit chubs. <laughs> I I became so unfit during lockdown. Like I tried uh, to do some online, you know, go on YouTube and do like an online yeah, in yeah, your fitness, house yeah, fitness yeah. thing. Um, but I don't know. There's something about being at home all the time. You just become demotivated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, and that's probably that's a scary thing too because you got you got to try and look for motivation. Either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, during lockdown, I mean, I was still working, but I wasn't doing podcasts and stuff. But I tried to teach myself some new skills. I tried mm. learning coding, or IT coding. Um, it's pretty intense, man. It's like learning a new language. It makes my head sore just thinking about it now, bro. Because <laughs> like, had- you can speak a little bit of Mandarin, eh? Yeah, but only a bit. in the training like sort of circle, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, like yeah, anything yeah. to do with fighting, like yeah, son. 
And Ni hao. Like, yeah. Pretty, that's, just, that's, nothing that's to like save a... my life, bro. Somebody <laughs> just somebody comes and starts. Rare. It's funny in China, people would like talk to you in Chinese like you would understand it. Because they'll just be like, uh, you know, and I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Just not a lot like, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, body language, sometimes body la- yeah. you can get it f- using body language, yeah. you know. So I, I can, you can kind of almost figure it out a little bit, you know, especially if they point and that, no, 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 you know. And yeah. Then, <clears throat> I was lucky with that when I was in India because I couldn't understand the language, but Indians are very, very yeah, yeah. They're very like Italian. handsy. You very know, like they, Italians are the same. Yeah, name. yeah. They use their like, hands what? a lot. What's so the problem? <laughs> you know? So like they're saying a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm like sitting there. I'm like, okay, I can kind of work out what they're saying. Mm. And then I'll they'll start laughing about something. Or well, this is when I was there, and then I'll laugh, and they're like, "Why are you laughing?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, "Oh, because is this what you're talking about?" They're like, "Oh, do you know Hindi?" Yeah. I'm like, "Nah, I'm just going off your hands, yeah. man." Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, have, have you heard of um, Russell Peters? That just reminded me. Oh, bro, me I love of, that guy. Oh, man. bro, does your missus love Russell? Yeah, Peters? yeah, yeah. That's so funny because you know a lot of shows is he he say I relate to too. Like yeah. you know, like that one of his jokes where he was just like somebody gonna yeah, get yeah, hurt real bad, yeah. and that's just like life ain't yeah, going yeah. up. That's like like when when like I don't know if you, but like I remember if um. Like you always think about calling the cops, like if you get hiding, you know what I mean? Like get a smack or something like that. And that Russell Peters kid, it's just like your parents would go, like, call the cops, like, call the cops. <laughs> yeah. Like, go call the cops, because I know it's going to take them at least 15 minutes to get here. And in that time, <laughs> someone's going to get hurt real bad. Someone's going to get hurt real bad. He man. can do so many accents too. That's what, like, he, he nails them, man. He, he, yeah, nah, he, he's, he's the goat, like, and he's got, and he, it's perfect because his demographic is like massive, eh? You know, oh, it's like, huge. You know, so everybody and they all can relate to him, and like, he's probably one of the most famous comedians now, like, yeah. apart from yeah. probably Kevin Hart, Joe Rogan. Yeah, mm. yeah. But he's he's not included in goat conversations a lot. He's though. not because, but, but he's real famous. He is. He, uh, yeah, I know, like. Unless you can relate to him, like then you know about him, sort of yeah, thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I think I think someone showed me a clip when I was uh, fourteen or fifteen mm. or something on the laptop, and it was you know back then in yeah, the dial-up yeah, days, yeah, yeah. and it was real bad. Get quality. off the phone! <laughs> hey, he's on the phone. <laughs> Get off the phone! I'm on the internet. <laughs> and um, he showed me uh, he showed me a clip, and it, I thought it was hilarious. He actually, um, I think last time he was here, me and my partner went, mm. bro. Like, I didn't know there was the, there's a lot of Indians in New Zealand yeah, man, but yeah. damn they came out in force yeah, to watch yeah, him yeah was it in Auckland yeah yeah I think it was at the Civic Theatre well Papatoi in, in Auckland's called Little India yeah it is it was funny because my partner uh, she worked there for a while in yeah, Papatoi yeah and she was just like, what the hell? I feel like I'm back in India. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I went to school just down the road from there at the La Salle, and Pap was just full of Indians. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they're cool people. They're you, cool peeps. You did a talk there, didn't yeah. you? At yeah. your old school. Yeah, How yeah. was that? It was good, man. It was so good. Like, I, I, I kind of felt bad a little bit because I hadn't been back um, there since I graduated, which was like back in 2009. Did they just contact you? Yeah. Like, hey, do you want to come do a speech? Yeah, well, so um, I hate to bring it up, but it's like on Friday there was like a huge, there was a massive brawl and um, that happened outside my school where a group of people came from another place, f- from two other schools, and they came and rushed all of most of our boys. Really? Was yeah. it gang related or? I don't know the full story, bro, but it was just social media, like oh. talking shit on social media, and then this one thing led to another, and then all of this just happened, and um, one of our kids got stabbed, and um, so and there was talk of like retaliation and revenge, oh. and like you know, and um, and so when I heard about it on Friday, I felt. I was angry, you know what I mean? Like I was yeah. mad because that's my school and I I like our our like I love my school like I we we're pretty close the whole the connection I have with the school is real still really strong especially with all of our old boys like we still represent it 
hard you know what i mean because mm. that we became men you know and that so it's like when i heard about it on friday bro i was like angry and i was telling my wife i was just like i'm mad like and then i i i, I thought i was just like i wonder if they're gonna ask me to speak um that was on friday mm. and then i go then i was telling my wife no matter what we say like there's nothing that's gonna stop whatever's gonna happen mm. you know what i mean like I, I put myself in that situation where if i if that was one of my boys that got stabbed right N nobody can say anything to me to stop nobody can say anything to our boys that like nobody's gonna just go hey don't do this and then i'd probably give you a middle finger yeah you know what i yeah. mean so i was just like and then my, my wife's real good she's like my calm really she she kind of speaks you know, like she's very she was very like um where i grew up right she has no idea of how well, like she understands it but it's just like i see violence i don't blink like i'm just like uh, you know what i mean like it doesn't affect you're me. numb to it i'm numb to it because i've seen it growing up i've seen like so when bad things happen i i i react in a way like i'm not surprised right where she gets really sad about it and how can they do this why did it you know what i mean but it's mm. just like i'm all about okay action instead of feeling sad about it da, 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 like what are we gonna do about it you know what i mean so when when that happened on friday bro there was just like this anger and this like i so, someone's gonna have to do something about this bro like no you're like you're not gonna nobody you can't let this slide you know what i mean and someone's gonna get a hurt someone, real bad. someone's gonna get a hurt real <laughs> bad <laughs> so it's just and then on saturday saturday came and then um I was still thinking about it and she was just like, you know, and I, I, it actually made, it was like the anger turned to sadness where it was just like, frick bro, like this this was happening when I was a kid, like mm. this was happening when I was young, you know, like what's it going to be like when my kids are all in high school, you know what I mean? Like it's just going to get, it's just going to keep getting worse if we don't address it now, you know, and then like. I was sad about it and then on Sunday, Johnny, John, shout out to Johnny, he texted me and then he asked, he goes, um, if I can come on Monday hmm. to talk. And I was just I looked at the text and I was and then I initially thought, like, man, what can I say to these kids that will, they'll actually take on board? You hmm. know, what can I and I and I was thinking, I uh, if if that was me sitting in the assembly and some some dude was just like talking, obviously, could because I'm an all boy and because I've got all these achievements, they'll they'll listen to me, to a certain extent, right? But I was still thinking like, what can I say to like change their? Imagine if that was me, you know, I, I'm sitting there and just going, shut up, texting the boys, I right, we're gonna go do this and this and this, let's go and get this, you know. So I spoke to, I spoke to the boys and um. It was good, man. It was good. Like I got a lot of good feedback, and a lot of young boys, they they spoke up about it. And like, it's just uh, what I said was like, you know, being being an island and kind. Of my parents coming from the islands, like giving us like more opportunities, giving us a a better start in life, you know. And it's just like. Um, what are we doing for them? You know what I mean? Like this, this kid they got, got stabbed. Um, his parents didn't know he was gonna, he was potentially gonna die that day when he walked out of the house. You know what I mean? They came from the islands too. They they never thought that, like that these kids would would end up in these situations. They thought like, oh yeah, we'll go. They'll get good jobs. They'll 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 succeed, do things in their life, right? But the th this is the fear and like. This is what I was trying to like get through to the kids. It's like, man, your parents sacrificed so much to bring you guys here, to bring you up in this country. How will you? How are you gonna repay them? You're, you're being tough in high school. You're being, you're like, you wanting to be tough, being popular, being the, all this extra clout. That doesn't fly in the real world. You know what I mean? You can't take your CV to an uh, employer and just and give them your CV and go, yeah, I was the toughest in seven form. I, I beat up this many people, right? He's just going to look at you and go, that's cool. 
what else like what that that means nothing to me you know what i mean like mm -hmm. there's there's nothing a lot of people which is sad their their the highlight of their life was high school like that that doesn't i never wanted that I that was a low light for mine. Yeah, yeah. So that that that's what I mean. But a lot of people, I know a lot of people whose highlight was high school, you know. And this is what I try and teach these kids: where it's just like, don't let high school be the highlight of your life. You know, high school is just like, yeah, you're that's the end of you being a kid. Now, you know what I mean. But you can, man, you can get a huge head start if you've got your head screwed on in high school. You know what I mean? Like most of these people in big positions now. High school wasn't their highlight, you know what I mean? Like how they, it's almost like, and and then these adults who are still living like they're still in high school now, Brian Hamilton, same shit. Like, gee, you're. There was like a murder in Beta just last week. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. it's like, and and that's the second murder in like a year. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just like what what's what's the point what's the what's the point in like for 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 me for for islanders um and for all my brothers out there it's just like what why 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 do you want to put your parents under this type of stress you know why do you want them to worry about you every time you leave the house like it's it's it, i i understand it because I was the same. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I did things just to do things, you know? It wasn't like, and there's a lot of things my mom didn't know that I did. Thankfully that she didn't. But I, so I understand these kids. I understand when there's not much to do, you sort of get, and when you're around your boys, everything gets hyped up, and then it's all that tribal thing comes in. Like, this is my school. This is my town. This is my hood. Anybody comes in here, you're going to get dealt with. You know what I mean? So yeah. I understand all of that. It, it's all peacocking. And you guys are a warrior race that, as well. That's it. That's it. It's, it's, in, it's in us. It's in us to, like, protect. It's in us to fight. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's just like... We have a, we have a, um, our school saying was fight the good fight. Burnham says in Amserta, it's like fight the good fight. And that doesn't mean physically, like you can win at life by fighting the good fight. Like it's just like this, this whole um, trying to be tough and, and thing, it doesn't fly in the real world. It doesn't get you anywhere. Like you gotta, you gotta build for the future. Build, build something that your kids can be proud of, and that your kids' kids can be proud of. You know what I mean? Because that's how we're gonna change the world. You know, you change yourself, then you, then you teach that to your kids, and eventually, what you want it may not happen in my, in my my lifetime or our lifetime. But what I teach my kids, hopefully, they'll teach their kids, and then that creates like this domino effect, and then eventually, how we wanted the world to be without no racism no violence no people sh shitting on each other and stuff like that eventually it'll come to a stage where we can just live sweet we can go you want to succeed sweet like you know what i mean you help me i help you like you know it's like but that's nothing none of that's going to happen if we can't do that to ourselves you know what i mean and like and for for kids and um in high school right now it's like if you can create get that mindset now that you, how you live now will have a huge impact later on in life that's huge that's that that's a head start imagine how far how far this this world can like can go if we have that mindset if we if we teach that in school if we if we teach that at home as well like you you teach your kids how to be like be good don't be like you know what i mean like don't look at somebody's skin color don't look at somebody's political views look at them judge them on the care what what did martin luther king say like ju judge someone by their character not by the color of their skin right mm. and then, then that's all that's that's what it is like you, you're not gonna know you're not gonna really know anyone without having a conversation with them so why before you have a conversation why are you judging you know what I mean? Don't don't judge them. You don't even know who they are. Talk first. You know what some, I mean? Some some people do go in with like a preconceived notion though. I've actually realized that I'm the exception, not the rule, because there's a lot of people out there that when they look at someone, they've already made up a judgment in their mind just yeah. based on their skin color. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I've I've often wondered where like where does where does racism stem from? But I actually think it, it can stem from a lot of things. But if you think about the way humans are wired, and let's say if you have a particular interaction with a particular ethnic group and every single time it's negative yeah. or 90% of the time yeah. it's negative, it doesn't matter who you are, mm. you're going to start to have a, a racial prejudice bet- you know, to that to that group, regardless yeah. of who it is. Yeah. Um, that's why I think it's so important that, you know, did, that anyone, you know, who's, whether it's Maldives or Polynesians mm. or whatever, be that light yeah. to that, that racist yeah, because yeah. they need to mm. see it. For sure, and like understanding creates unity, man. Mm, yeah, hundred percent. And it's like, and like f- on that note, it's like I know when we had little white kids, like white kids at school were treated differently. You know what I mean? And and it's and, I hate it, hey. and it's like and it's like these. It's because these kids get kind of taught that at home. You know what I mean? Like there's this, yeah, there's definitely. this like white people are this, white people are that. So like. You know, I've seen it a lot during school where, like, a white kid would just be like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's not bullying, but it's sort of like you get picked last because of your attributes sort of thing or you, like, oh, you know, you you don't know because you're white. Like, just little just little things. And then that eventually that kid's going to grow up thinking all us islanders are like that. Well, I even got it with um obviously with my partner being Indian. Yeah. Before we even went to India, she she warned me about the perceptions of white people. Kora. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So she so because of you know, America has a lot of influence yeah. on India. But so there's a there's a stereotype that white people are players. Like they're all players. Really? They're like womanizers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if you think of, you know, the American sitcoms yes, and stuff, yes, yes, yes. It, I can understand why yeah. that would be portrayed. Yeah. So she warned me, you know, just to be careful about like when I'm there, and I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So that's that's interesting. That's interesting to note. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think when they met me though, they were like, ah, oh, okay, because I think they think all white people are like Americans, and I'm like, obviously Kiwis are very different to yeah, Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're not as showy. Mm, we're yeah. quite uh, we're more laid back I we're guess. reserved reserved yeah, yeah that's the right yeah, word yeah 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 we're reserved so we'll, we'll... so i mean there's there's racial prejudice to everyone any race you yeah know? it just yeah. depends on the circumstances yeah and you have to look further than just the person it's like yeah. well, what what brought that person to that point why do they think of things this way yeah i was actually because you know the, the black lives matter yeah. protests and stuff i'm mm-hmm. not sure if you know this there was a dude that went to the protest wearing a make America Great Again hat. Yeah. Did you see about that? Yep. So, ironically, I I saw the picture of the guy, you know, and his hat got taken off. I saw Izzy like ripped into him, David um, Farrier, that yeah. journalist ripped into him. And I was, I saw like the picture in the video and stuff and I was thinking, oh, I've seen this guy somewhere. Where do I know this guy from? Turns out um, he used to go, well, the, my old church that I used to go to. Yeah. He, he went to that church. And so that's where I remembered him. And mm. I was like, Okay, but I remember all my interactions with him were all good. Like, I never got any sense from the guy mm. that he would, that he was a racist or anything. That's why I found it so bizarre. I've actually tried to get him on the show. Yeah. Um, but to, to no avail. So I just, I actually think he, well, he could have been trolling. He was trolling, bro. He, ha- he would have had to be trolling. I, I, yeah, there's a part of me that, like, there's 95% of me that thinks he was trolling. But then just because I had a few interactions with the guy, I'm like, maybe he's just dumb. Like, because well, that, so, that, some people it's just other that, ah. bro. It's either that, it's either he was trolling, he knew exactly what he was doing, or he's just a dummy. Yeah. That's why I'm like, I mean, that's why I'd want to talk to him and be like, bro, I've met you a couple of times, man. Like, we're not boys or anything, but, like, you've never given me the sense that you would do something like this. And, and and he was he never I mean there's people that I've met that are way bigger assholes mm. who've been like real dicks mm. to me and he wasn't yeah but that's why I was just like why why would you do that like, why it would be like you know like walking into like a um, Black Panther protest and wearing a Ku Klux Klan yeah. hat or something yeah. it was just like why I don't understand yeah I like that he knew exactly what he was doing like I watched his um, 
<laughs> his video oh, afterwards. Yeah. I and think he's deactivated his Facebook. Yeah, now. so I watched it because he was getting so much <laughs> hate. Yeah, and like it, it was, it was just a bad time for him to try and troll. Like it wasn't funny at all, especially with tensions real high like that. Like yeah, yeah. If if he, I doubt that he's racist, bro. Like I doubt it. But he just wanted his clout, his yeah, moment of fame. Yeah, he wanted his maybe. moment of fame, and which is stupid because it's just like, bro, he could have got like really badly hurt. Like he didn't. They, I, I saw that they burned his hair. Yeah, he could have like, and that would have backfired. You trying to be funny in a serious situation, it doesn't fly, especially with like people actually hurting from this. Like we've got a lot of like African dark skinned people here, yeah. like who actually understand that because like, so what I feel here in like in, in South Auckland these guys get everywhere in the country you know what I mean like mm. a lot a lot of I know a lot of people who like treat them differently and they'll have like their their how they live their life is way different like their their world is different from our world yeah particularly if they came from say America there was a guy I had on my show last year Kevin Posey African American mm. guy mm. and he said he ran um he ran into a few people or he met people and you know they'd just be like oh you're one of those guys are you a gangster are you a gangster just because he's he's black and he's from america yeah yeah and he and he's like a real real nice guy and he's like ah oh, i just have to try and ignore it you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's just like i just don't take it on yeah board. that's but it. it's you like see, why why do you do that you know you see you see a black guy from america automatically like people think that he's a thug he's a gangster you know that's just yeah like, Especially if he's just got you got a hat on. Oh, he must be a gangster. Because that's what sensationalized in the media. I mean, mm. every single African American I've met, either here or I mean, I've only been to the states once, which is in Seattle. Mm. Every African American that I met didn't fit that stereotype at all. They didn't come across gangster. Mm. You know, they didn't come across as a thug or you yeah. know they were packing heat or yeah, come yeah. up to you and you're you're some man. You know. Hey, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, they yeah, talk yeah, and yeah, shit's yeah. about to pop off. Yo, yeah. You want to go night-night, yeah. nigga? You want to go night-night? <laughs> about to pop you up. Yeah, Pop yeah. you up, man. Yeah. But they're all, all nice as, mm. you know? Uh, so it's... The media is just as guilty, man. They yeah. sensationalize everything. Like, everything. They just want to create division, man. They want to create that. They want to create how we think and about someone this. else. Yeah. All for money. Money. Because they're losing money these days. Because, mm. you know, social media and all that. So they're like, oh, we have to make clickbait articles. Yeah. Just to yep. make money. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody, yeah, for sure. The article has nothing to do with the actual title eh, of the article. You know, there, there's like a little snippet, blah, 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 said this. And then you see the whole article is way different from what the title says, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the media is probably more a, a huge, like, they should take a lot of blame for this shit, like what's happening too, because like... Oh, they do. They spin it, man. You know, because they spin it and like, you know... Uh, I saw it even... Um, so, you know that... Uh, what is it? Ashley Bloomfield, the... What is it? The director of Ministry of Health or yeah, whatever he Dr. is. Dr. Ashley, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember how, you know, New Zealand pretty much loved the Loved guy. them, yeah. Loved them. Mm. Now, all of a sudden, turned on him. Just because yeah, of these two cases, yeah, but and, and and I remember there was this Tova. I think it's Tova O'Brien is her name. She's a journalist, <clears> and every time at those cabinet meetings, she's always asking stupid questions, like some of the most stupid questions. She's like, "Oh, um, how can anyone trust you now? How can anyone trust you?" Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? And even Mike Hosking, who's like, "Oh man, he is the worst." At nah. it. He just talks over everyone. And he's like, "Are you going to quit? Are you going to quit?" Because that's <laughs> I, I watched his interview with Jacinda and he was like trying to bait her too, like when she. Oh, he, that's what he does, man, bro. And it's I was annoying. just like, so like, Jacinda, I, I like what she did with the lockdown and all all that stuff, but I, I look at all these politicians like the same, bro. There's always an agenda, so I mm. don't I don't fall for oh I love you like you you're 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 doing all these amazing things because nah because there's always this background noise that's happening and you know that we only find out about later on like all these bills that are passed through like just randomly apparently the lockdown was illegal as well which is weird i don't understand that like how uh, yeah yeah um i don't understand how i don't understand all the fine print and yeah, stuff nah, nah, i neither. know i know enough about politics to have a conversation like yeah. if a politician's sitting here i can have a conversation with yeah. them and know what the hell that they're talking yeah. about but i don't know the hardcore intricate details of it yeah eh? yeah yeah, yeah nah, if well, you start neither. speaking to me about that i'll just 
I'm just I'll a, just pretend yeah, like I know. <laughs> I'm just a kid from Fiji yeah. eh, talking New Zealand politics. <laughs> no, nah, but yeah. So what was I saying? So like with politicians, I don't. There's no like, oh, I love this one. I love this one. Like, I, voting for me is just like I'm, I'll vote for the what like I like the most. What do you? What can you do for like me, or what can you do for the people? But that's that's, that's how I, everyone votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it's just like, but. All these promises. Oh, they never happen. You know, they never happen. It sounds good. Like, you know what I mean? It's almost like they flirted the church. You, you're trying to sleep with me. You're trying to flirt with me. Like, I'll get you this and this and this. You know what I mean? Well, it, with that being said, it is it is a complex thing, politics, right? And you got to remember, you know, it's a coalition. So New Zealand First, the mm. Greens, they both have a say as well. So mm. even if Labour want to get something through, yeah, if, it's, if, if Greens and New Zealand First are blocking them, mm. Mm. Um, then it can be hard but then there is outright times which is an epic fail like mm. kiwi build that was that was an epic fail for example yeah um but yeah i i get what you mean yeah but i just don't like it when everything becomes you know like let's say i say something nice about jacinda mm. right yeah you know like i acknowledge all the good things she's done yeah do i think that she everything she's done correct of course not you know mm. but if I say something nice about her, then everyone's like, oh, yeah, you're a yeah, Labour supporter. That's it, that's oh, it. you're a socialist. That's like, it. what? No, I'm just saying. You can, yeah. Two things can be right. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, two things can be true. You can like her, like what she's done here. Doesn't mean that you like everything, yeah. but you just like this thing. You know what I mean? And like, I'm but not they, loyal to any party, but but they paint you with that brush. Yeah, right. Yeah, they paint you with that brush. So it's just that's like, why I haven't had politicians on for a while, man. Because yeah. like I was. Having people on, and, oh, Reese is a national supporter, or oh, he's a Labour supporter, yeah. or oh, he treated this person different, this politician different mm. when they were on as opposed to this one. Yeah. This national supporter. He didn't ask him the hard questions, but he asked the hard questions still. And it's like, oh, come on, man. Like, yeah. 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 I I'm not smart enough to think yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially if they, have, they tried sending you like, questions like you can ask this and then you're oh not, yeah you're not allowed yep. to ask this yep politicians yeah, see, that's, yep. that, that's what i don't i hate like, it and it's not just because you know they have their questions prepared in advance it's just because it messes up the the vibe the of the flow conversation as well, yeah. as well. Like, i think people really appreciate when politicians are transparent mm, when real. you can sense that they're genuine i mm. think that's one of the reasons why people like jacinda yeah because you know, they feel she's genuine yeah as opposed to some politicians that I don't know. You can just tell with politicians that are too prepared. Yeah. Well, I had one politician on during the local elections and mm. um, he made me write out, he wanted a list of every single question I was going to ask him. And the the in my opinion, I don't think the the podcast went that well. Yeah. During the podcast, I got the sense from him, like, this is so rehearsed, man. He has all these answers completely rehearsed. Yeah. And because you know i'd already given him all the questions mm. so then i i threw him for a loop i was like nah how would this i'm gonna i'm gonna ask him something that he's not prepared That's for and the i perfect did time. and then he he was called off guard and he was oh. like uh 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 and i was like what, what's it? this what, what's this oh, uh, it's the andrew andrew king one oh, andrew king yeah. andrew king because yeah. i asked him a question about amazon mm -hmm. it was about amazon because i didn't include that in the question list yeah. about um amazon so there were talks of Amazon possibly setting up one of their factories here yeah. in, in Hamilton because we have the land to do it. Yeah. And uh, he couldn't answer the question. I mean, if you go back and, and watch it, you'll yeah. see. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to find with the timestamps and stuff. But yeah, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is interesting. You know? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, you would have hurt his feelings. You would have been burning inside. Yeah, too. he was like, shit. Yeah, <laughs> this wasn't on the list. Yeah, did I miss it? Yeah, yeah. But... yeah no. Nah, po politics as a whole is like, shh, we got they. We've given them too much power. Like we're still, we're still. They should never have that much power over the people. Like the people at the end of the day should have the final say. You know, these. <sighs> yeah, it's a it's a hard line mm. because if the people have too much power. And they're misinformed, yeah. Because you know, with fake news propaganda yeah. that's yeah. that's out there, mm. then they can actually make the wrong decision. Yeah. I mean, I think actually that's Trump true. is a byproduct of that, right? Mm. Because it's so easy to sp spread misinformation on social media these days. Yeah, you know these five G, Huawei, and you know, well, not Huawei, but the five G cell tower conspiracies that, that started coronavirus. 5G, yeah. I'm like. 
I've worked a telecommunications man. That's not how it works. Yeah. Like it's not how it works. It's funny because we got like our all of our Wi Fi things at home. It's like this shit's running through our bodies every single day. You know what I mean? Our yeah. phones in our pocket. That all of that. All that. I didn't really. To be honest, I was trying to get like I was like, mm, I wonder what. Like I was trying to figure it out. Like what angle is this five G thing? coming from like with people selling it oh yeah you know the only places where um the covert is at is these are the first 5g towers are in there and i was just like that's weird that's like how like, i was trying to figure out how are you connecting this with corona i just couldn't get it conspiracies are a rabbit like you can go down the rabbit hole with that man it's i love easy. a good conspiracy bro like but if you get into it man <laughs> yeah. you can find yourself like i got into it for a little while and i i I got myself out of what's, out what's, of it a, cons- I signed- what's a conspiracy that you like the flat Earth, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, th- did you I'm- go? Did you think that maybe the Earth? Is well, flat- when, well, I thought okay, maybe I dug a little deeper, but that wasn't the only conspiracy. I mean, there are other conspiracies. I can't even remember them now. But I think the flat Earth. When I first started looking into it, I was like, oh man, okay, maybe this is plausible. Yeah. But then you're like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Like when you take yourself out of it, yeah, out of it, because yeah. you know you get so emotionally invested in it, yeah, um, that you know you can be blinded by it sometimes. Yeah, I, I go into like most conspiracies, bro, and just be like, hmm, I, like I like thinking of, I like thinking the way that they think. Like why? So like yeah, with the flat Earth thing, I'm just like actually this could like if you and then and then you're like. Nah, that wouldn't fly because of this and this. You know what I mean? Like. It, it can't be flat, but you have a good argument. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. It can't be flat, but you get you got a good argument. Like, but the, yeah, sorry, because they saying? say like um, the those NASA photos that we see from space are all CGI, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, mm, yeah. Well, I've seen Avatar, so they could do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but mm. yeah, but I think because I went to that place just very briefly i can understand now why people... how brief is briefly like a year no nah, bro what the <laughs> hell? like a couple of weeks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um i can understand how people can get to that state yeah though. yeah it's very like you think of people who get radicalized like mm. terrorists you know people that end up in cults mm. those sort of things you know mm. i i can understand because what you feed into your subconscious, man. Yeah, that's very, very powerful. The stuff mm. that you absorb. Yeah, I, I was like, obviously, I've taken a hiatus from Facebook because I was waking up and I was feeling like depressed. I'm like, yeah. why am I feeling depressed? I'm yeah. eating right. I'm exercising. Like, what, what, what the hell's going on? Mm. And I realize it's because every day I'm scrolling through my phone. Yeah, and ninety percent of the information that I'm reading is negative. Mm. People just bitching or moaning yeah. about something or racist yeah. comments or whatever, mm. and you're subconsciously absorbing it into your mind. You yeah, know? and you're almost creating that like it's yeah. your, your own. That's is, this is the world that you're living in. It's just a sad, ugly, dark place, and because that's all you're looking at every day. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's good that you've you've gone up. Like I, I don't know. I feel I, I'm sad about the state of the world, but then I'm like, if I can just create a good system at home this is just gonna spread you know what i mean like yeah. my my and then all my connections if i can create good vibes for everybody that i come around then hopefully that's like it starts something you are know? you able to channel those negative bad vibes though into you know training yeah, yeah. or a fight mm. like do you do you ever you know if you're hurt mm. you know how sometimes if you're hurt very badly something painful mm. that you experience you can kind of stew on it. Mm. But would you stew on it to the point that you'd carry it, use it as leverage in a fight? Like, yeah, I'm going to... Nah. Ca- and, nah? Nah, bro. Like, uh, that's, that's good, f- though. A fight is just emotionless. Like, there's no... So th- you totally disconnect yourself from it. From everything. Like, there's 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 been moments where, um, like, something affects me in the ring and that 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 creates like a real i have a really bad like a, a real bad night you know like i mm. my nothing's working my my punches aren't fast enough my i'm not dodging quick enough blah 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 and then it's only because like something's still stuck in my mind like and it's usually a family thing not really anything else mm. you know what i mean like but i don't 
anything outside my circle, nothing really affects me. You know, that's like, good. You know, so I don't like anger and all of that. <clears throat> if you're the person I'm angry at, and we spar, then yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take it out <laughs> yeah, on you. Yeah. Okay, you know. Well, but, I'll make sure that we never spar. Uh, and yeah, I'll never, ang- uh, yeah. I'll never have you getting angry at me. So, but it's like it's I'm not eh, like I'll take anger. Like a lot of times I go training. Like if if I've just like had an argument, you know, with my muscles or something like that, then I go training and we just train, and it, it makes you feel better. You know what I mean? Or like if I'm like angry about something or like sometimes sleep bro you don't have enough sleep you're mm. just sad you know and i think that's my biggest thing is like i get sad on certain days because of my sleep because i don't have enough sleep so i finish work and i gotta get up early to train and then that that's like you know and then it's just a cycle and then you have four hours today four hours tomorrow four hours the next day and then eventually you're just like frick bro like hammered the last time i came on the podcast i had like four hours sleep and i was well like, you're all good bro uh, yeah, i would well, i would never have known i had four hours sleep bro, and i and i didn't have breakfast that morning because i was just like frick i gotta go so i came to the podcast and just like luckily like the night before i had like five hours so it was like it was if, kind of okay yeah if i have more last night than tonight then that's good but if i had Less last night and then less t- today. Like, mm. you know what I mean? <clears throat> That's when it's bad. Yeah. <clears throat> but, no, nah, I, I didn't even know we, we were going. Oh, well, we've segwayed so much. Yeah. It? It's all good. So many That's, s- That's what I like. I like that the best when you just segue. So many words. Conspiracies were on <laughs> that. We were on and then we that. got onto... <laughs> Oh, we got to do anger, I guess. Yeah, mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah. But, but that ties into mental health. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, then that's that's still an ongoing issue now. You know, I think I was actually talking to someone about this. I'd be keen to get your thoughts, but I actually think, I mean, mental health is is a very complex thing. Mm. But I actually think, and you're an athlete, so mm. you, you probably know. But what we put in our bodies affects how we think. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And, there's a lot of people out there, like particularly people who are in the lower class. Mm. It's like a self um, perpetuating cycle. Mm. You know, you're in the lower class, so you can't, you don't have much money. Mm. So therefore, because eating healthy in New Zealand really, really hard. Right? Yeah, For, yeah, you know, if, if you have to pay a lot of money if you want to eat healthy. So mm. as a result, people are, you know, they eat the fast food. You mm. know, the Burger King, the McDonald's, it's easy, smashing back the Coke, the mm. the chips. You yeah, know, all this bad stuff, right? Not knowing that affects not only your weight but your mood Mental as well state, yeah. and then i think that leads and you add an alcohol to that and that can lead to the depression mm-hmm. to the domestic violence mm. and it all links back and yeah. because probably because you feel like that and you're in a shitty mood you use fast food or that food to make yourself feel better yeah, food is comfort yeah, yeah yeah which is a temporary thing mm. and then after after the high finishes and you come crashing down yeah. you feel like crap again because mm. I've I've noticed from changing my diet quite dramatically. I haven't had fast food in ages, really. Yeah. But um, I feel a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, I That's feel good. a lot better. Yeah, when um, with the lockdown, when it was just all home cooked meals, like it was real good. Like on the days where my wife's busy, we have like um, we get takeaways. You know, mm. we we'll get, get get something, whatever, whatever we feel like at the time, but. Like during the lockdown, like everyone's vibe was different. Like not not just my family, but everybody I knew that used to go hard with takeaways and stuff. Everybody was like more vibrant. Every you know, it, it was weird. Yeah. It was like almost a happier time because everyone's mental state was sweet. And like obviously there were people with like who had lost their jobs and all this stuff. But like when takeaways were taken out of it, just that small little thing. Like people like some of the boys at work used to, like takeaways maccas after work every night you know what i mean yeah. and it's just like but i i noticed that like they they just looked vibrant like more healthier you know what i mean that's why i was so sad when as soon as we came to what was it, level three and everybody just Bro. 2 a.m at mcdonald's it's, i'm like no that why? is actually disgusting like it's like i i would i got maccas like i got maccas but i didn't wait outside like i got maccas a couple of days later when i felt like it you know what i mean but these guys like 
woke up in so the early in the morning, you know? And like, it's like, and a lot of these people say they don't have time to train. They don't have time to think. But you had time to go and wait outside Mecca's at, what, what time did it open? I think it's at midnight or 1am. Bro, or and it's just like, and then I see it on my Snapchat and on, on people's stories and I'm, and like, I don't want to be mean, you know what I mean? I'm just like, bruh, you know, you could have like, you could do this every single day, but go for like a 20 minute walk, a 30 minute walk, you know what I mean? Getting up that early just to go have Maccas. Like a, that shows how much, how bad Maccas is for you, bro. Yeah. And it's, it's so a, addictive. It is addictive. And it's a mentality thing as well, right? Yeah. Like I know a lot of business people, obviously CEOs and stuff who come on here. Mm. They don't. They don't go get Maccas at 2 a.m. in the morning, man. Mm. Like, their priorities are completely different. Nah, nah. And Amb- different ambitions, different drive. Yeah, that's it. Know, what it's... they value, mm. you know. And um, that's probably why they're in a different position. Than, exactly, you know, exactly. Because, because... They're, they're more focused. Mm. Their priorities are different. What's important, eh? Yeah, what's more important? important, what? Your Big Mac, you know? Nah, bro. Nah, you know? yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, sh- like... Uh, shift everything like, just like frick it's not it's all materialistic mcdonald's is like a marketing god eh? like you know what i mean like they've just got like the golden arches every corner of the world you know when i was yeah. in china um we we used to call it the de- oh what do we call it the devil's the devil's food no no it was just like the devil's something the devil's arches or something like that the devil the devil m and like it was everywhere like i there was this one place, I forget the name of the town, but it was so small, bro. Shitty as, there's just like nothing there, really. But there was a Macca's. Yeah. There was a Macca's, bro. And like, this was like in the middle of nowhere, bro. <laughs> there's a Macca's. And I was just like, frick, the, the reach. And it tastes exactly the same. Exactly the same. It, exactly the same. The only place where I tasted like, the friend Maccas was in Fiji, which is weird. I, 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 the Fiji Maccas doesn't taste like New Zealand Maccas or the rest of the world Maccas. I don't know why. Better, worse? I think the meat's different. It's not better or worse. It's just different. Just like different. the meat's different. Like they, I don't know. Maybe. Well, the 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 way they farm will be different to probably because I've I've heard that kiwi meat is some of the most tasty and yeah most nutrition- where we go we export all of our good shit yeah, yeah, too and we yeah. keep all our crap keep all our crap and yeah. feed our people with our crap it's like yeah. with milk right we export all our milk overseas for mm. cheap prices yeah and then we charge like ridiculous prices for milk here it's just it's everybody insane. should get off milk milk is not good for yeah. you yeah almond milk that's the way to go almond milk yeah that's our that's our life yeah almond milk is the shiz mate it is <laughs> Cool, man. Well, uh, I might wrap up there, but Sweet. Carlos has got a special surprise for us. Ooh. He's not hes not going to be eating scorched almonds <laughs> this time, although I know some people love that. Yeah. One of my mates is like, bro, I'm just skipping to the section where he eats scorched almonds. I'm yeah. like, why do you want to watch him eat chocolate, yeah. man? <laughs> uh, but he is going to drop some bars on this. For those that don't know, obviously, I've had a few rap guests on here and they've spit some bars at the end and... Carlos in his spare time, in his downtime, you know, lost he, the fighter, lost the rapper. <laughs> he's he's uh, secretly a lyricist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're just having fun, guys. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Before before we do that, uh, what's the best place for everyone to follow you? Um, Instagram, Lost Flying Fijian, um, and same thing as my Facebook athletes page, Lost Flying Fijian. Yeah, so I'll post. I'll there. post everything. Um, yeah, over the over on the spotify mm. is that your phone yeah i was like are there birds in here <laughs> <laughs> cool all right uh well get ready for some cool bars tweet i appreciate it all right all right we in this carlos x the best mma rapper in the game <laughs> ever period. in history for real uh yeah look listen closely Look. First off, Reese, how'd we even get here? Lost the fighter, why is he trying to switch gears? 
clearly too many punches He thinks that we're all is Stick to lunges lad We'll take it from here That's what they'll think bro Cause clearly it's unfair I could kill a man On the mic and in this lounge chair You see these rhymes here They're not for everybody Over your head bars Bitcoin bands around your party If you miss that I suggest you fall back Hit shots on all you rap stars I'm hitting our starter caps So let's start with a couple facts I'm on a mission Ambition got me exchanging head kicks For a couple stacks Ayy I'm in the league of my own Lost raps Now quick bro Somebody get out your phone Making back Got people asking for loans Who would have thought A kid from Fiji Would get to sit on the throne Ha huh? I'm established As one of the best NZ Has ever harvested I hope you invest I hope you repress I hope you digest This food for thought This mood I brought Ghosting dudes like Boom you drop A million styles That's just two I pop Pop lock then drop Ha huh? This that real hip hop Cause I remember the time When everybody doubted a shadow when I stepped out of line Now it's no filter when I talk Always speak in my mind Patiently waited for the day When I could finally shine Bling Here I am world It's a pleasure to meet You know the name King of this game I'm claiming that shit I'm claiming this mix I'm claiming your miss I'm claiming every single life That even claimed I in it Boom Confident ah, Killer rhymes yeah. Dropping hooks on eardrums As well as mics Ha Get it yeah, I'm having fun with this Lyrically gifted from the heavens Why no bliss with it? Mad cause your girl is in love with the way I flex with it Baby, baby Dropping notorious hits Flossing their glorious drip The game ain't ready yet So I just slide in the tip And I'm out, it's lost Yeah Yeah, that is the show everyone Let's go Make sure you share, like and subscribe And support the brother Carlos X, man Until next time Let's do this Stay safe Let's grow Peace